Hey, what's happening guys? Willie here at The Great Outdoors. And today I am outdoors. I am actually outside in the garage where it is now right around 31 degrees. It's cold. That's right. And you know, if you're like me, and I wouldn't wish that on anybody, sometimes you have no choice but to be outdoors. Uh, my job for the last 31 years has been outdoors, and I've learned to get by outdoors on little to nothing sometimes. But there are times when... Uh, we uh, take things for granted, we overlook things, and, and we could uh, really use our tools a little more wisely. Behind me, I have one of the benefits of life, um, a Mr. Heater. Now, this is the Mr. Big Heater, or whatever you want to call it. He has two tanks on either side, the small green propane tanks that go on either side. Now, I have used one of these things outside in the garage in the shed, in the basement, wherever, when it's been cold and I'm trying to work. And on numerous occasions, I have taken for granted its abilities to do other things. Now, I have seen through the years people using these heaters for numerous things, different things, and they have a lots of cool little add-ons that you really probably didn't know about. Now, there's probably thousand billion of you out there that already know what I'm about to show you. But then again, there's probably some that, that don't. Maybe you don't. Well, I've never done this before, and I thought, why not? This is a good morning. It's extremely cold out here right now. It's in the 31, 32 degree. Even in my garage, this concrete floor, it's cold. But if I were to have to come out here and work, I've often wondered, with the heat that comes off of this thing, can you legitimately cook you a little bit of a meal using nothing more than Mr. Heater over here while he's heating your area? If you got to work right out here in the area, providing you don't have sawdust flying or drywall dust or things like that, you know, you're not really going to want to cook while that's going on, but you can utilize this machine for more than just heat. Let's see if we can pull it off got a couple of things over here that we're going to give a try as little as cooking some bacon and maybe mixing up one of those mountain house meals over there that the uh, overlanders and campers like to use so much so let's see how long it takes to get this thing up hot enough to fry some bacon now excuse the bad lighting but again we're out here in the garage and this is the best I got I know I look like... So, while old Mr. Heater's over here warming up just a bit, because it's been a while since I've actually had it on, um, I'm going to show you one of the cool things about using the old Mr. Heater. Is this guy right here. This is actually for a paint tray. Okay? It goes in a paint tray for rollers. This is also really, really good on the big buddy heaters right here or the big mister heaters, whichever version you have, as a cooking area. And we're going to give it over here a try, and I'm going to put this thing over top of the flame because most of the heat, it goes up, comes out the top. Now this particular version of heater, it actually has an electric fan that you can press a button over there on the side. I don't have the batteries in it right now because I take them out during the summertime to keep the batteries from corroding in the back. But it makes the fan come on and blows the heat outward as opposed to it just going straight up. But for what we're doing today, we want the heat to go straight up. Because now we have a cooking surface. Now the only downfall, the only downfall to this is using certain types of pans, you have metal handles. Well they get hot too. So you kind of have to put them off to the side. Put that there. We're going to put us a little pure canola in there. Oh, it's already frying. Now, just so we can get a firm time going on, we started at 9.57. Okay, that's when I dropped the bacon in. Let's just see how long this takes. And 
Now also, when it comes to leveling up your food, this rack is going to droop slightly. You're going to see it kind of drop toward the front just because of the weight of the pan. But it has a lip that comes upward, a little kick tail if you will. You can actually bring your pan out further onto that lip and you can level up your pan to keep your oils and things in, in a level manner to keep everything cooking kind of uniform. Now also, I'm going to put my water on here to boil because I have one of these Mountain House biscuits and gravy that takes three quarters of a cup of water that needs to be boiled. And you can cook it right inside of here once you dump that water in. These are very convenient. Expensive, but convenient. So we have officially been frying our bacon now. 10.07. Hey, where'd that go? Hot water boiling on the other hand, not so much going on just yet. Okay, I'm gonna say at this point, bacon done. 10.09. At this point though, our water is not boiling yet. Well, the water just started boiling, and it is 10:19. Okay, so you got to plan ahead. Start boiling your water first, because I've basically cooked four pieces of bacon in the time that it's taken to get water to boil, and that's only six ounces of water. So you have to time yourself just right. Start boiling the water first, I think. Just in case some of you aren't steeped in the Mountain House freeze-dried biscuits and gravy. Before you pour your water in, take that out. Now I've heard tell that people have cooked them with it in there and everything's been well and fine, but take it out. It's just the right thing to do. Now stir it up, get that water mixed in there. And then we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Then we'll come back and stir it up again. It is hot. I'm going to tell you right now, it's hot. Now, at this point, our bacon is just about done. So if you don't want to have your stove up on high, you can just drop her down slightly. Cut that one side off. So here we are. We got bacon. Very good. Fresh hot bacon right off the flame. And then, biscuits and gravy. Let's see how that did. Nice and mushy. Look at, I mean, can you see the steam coming out of that thing? It's It, it heated that water up nice and hot. There's not a lot of biscuits. It's a whole lot more gravy. There are some chunks in there. Oh, that's tasty. Man, that's really tasty. I'm sure there's plenty of salt in it, though. Good thing I got some coffee. So there you go. When you're out in the garage working, it might take a little time, but that'll give you time to finish what you're doing. Get your water boiling and then get your bacon cooked. This is a uh, interesting, very interesting. I, I've never done this. I can't say that I've ever done this before. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you have you one of these Mr. Heaters, even if you don't have the big one, you can get the small one. Even if you have the small Mr. Heater or the little buddy heater, whatever they call it, you can still get the smaller sized roller pieces to go inside your paint rollers to put up on the handle up there and you can cook on it and believe me it does a good job i'm enjoying this this is fun thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this little video we'll see you on the next one whatever the next one may be that's good
and it's not near enough. Where's my bacon?